An arrest is made in connection to anti-Semitic and racist graffiti. The president takes a trip to the border and an education reform and an education forum is held on campus. This is OU Nightly. Hello, thanks for watching OU Nightly. I'm William Soule. And I'm Aspen Endress. We begin tonight with continued coverage of the racist graffiti that shook the Norman community. Norman police arrested 45-year-old Allison Christine Johnson yesterday afternoon. Surveillance video from McKinley Elementary, one of three sites vandalized in Norman, helped police identify Johnson. Yesterday afternoon, just after 2 p.m., uh, we were notified that she came into the lobby and was um, wanting to speak with the police department. And so officers contacted her, an investigation followed with an interview, and based on that information, she was booked into the Cleveland County Detention Center. Johnson will face charges of acts of terrorism. She's accused not only of the racist graffiti in Norman, but of the incidents in Oklahoma City as well. Education funding continues to be a top concern among many Oklahomans, and last night, concerned teachers and parents gathered with political leaders to discuss how to improve it. Tatum Wilson joins us with the details. Tatum? Aspen, teachers say the push to restore and possibly even increase classroom funding is still worth fighting for. It's been one year since the Oklahoma teacher walkout when thousands gathered at the state capitol to fight for education funding. The result, a teacher pay raise averaging about $6,000, and this year, another $1,200 raise. But many teachers say this isn't enough. Last year we did get increase in funding, but it was not enough to make up for 10 years of cuts. So we're working very hard with the legislature, with the public, with parents, with different groups to just make people aware that our children deserve better. While the approval of House Bill 1010XX increased the education budget by nearly $500 million to provide teacher pay raises, that money did not go toward other issues many Oklahoma schools face. The operational money is incredibly important to us and that's what we're working on. And operational money not just for class sizes but effective counselors. Students come to us every day uh, with trauma that we have to address, so uh, that's something that we're also very focused on. Now the fight goes on to fully fund education. You can't fund education one big shot at once and then don't think of education again for 10 years. It is a continuous funding process. The April 1st deadline for the Oklahoma House to come up with a plan to fund education came and went without a proposed budget. The forum last night was called The Ethics of Defunding Public Education. It was moderated by State Senator Mary Boren, who represents part of Norman and worked as a school counselor for part of her career. Will, back to you at the desk. Thanks, Tatum. Debtors prisons were banned under federal law in 1833 and affirmed unconstitutional by the Supreme Court in 1983 under the 14th Amendment's Equal Protection Clause. But do debtors prisons still exist in our state? Oh, Unitely's Lauren Linville found out that they do. Debtors' prisons are unconstitutional, yet they live on in Oklahoma. There are different levels within the criminal justice system. When a person gets arrested and booked into the county jail, if they're unable to pay their bond, they must remain incarcerated in the jail until their case is disposed of. And so what, what equates to happening in those situations is a person is being held before they've actually even been found guilty of a crime. The other is when people who can't afford to pay fees and fines are incarcerated. Catherine Goonan experienced this herself. Did not have a dollar towards my bond. Uh, I sat in the Oklahoma County Jail ugh, for four months. Catherine was locked up for four months pre-trial, arrested for drug trafficking, essentially living in a debtor's prison. So in essence, we are criminalizing poverty in that situation. Catherine had yet to be convicted of a crime, but was on 24-hour lockdown. The four months that I was there, I probably got outside of my cell a total of five times. 
The Vera Institute of Justice conducted a study on the Oklahoma County Jail. It found an overcrowding with 2,500 inmates in a facility built for 1,200. An estimated 80% of those people in this jail were not convicted yet, and one-fourth of jail admissions were for nonviolent crimes. It cost the, the, the taxpayers of, of any county uh, a lot of money, uh, uh, precious resources, scarce resources to house these individuals. Catherine was bailed out by TEAM, a nonprofit that focuses on helping individuals re-entering society. She wants her life back and the lives of thousands of other Oklahomans who are behind bars because they are poor. Lauren Linville, OU Knightley. Catherine works two jobs now and has regained custody of her child. And Will, it's been a really nice day outside today. I agree, and the medieval fair is a good way for everyone to take advantage of the great weather. Jake Mammon joins us live from the festival. Jake. That's right, guys. It's a Friday afternoon out here in Norman, and I'm hanging out here at Reeves Park where they're hosting the annual medieval fair, and there's a lot going on right now. The weather is perfect, okay? The clouds have started to roll in, but the temperatures are in the 70s. It's really a beautiful night to come hang out and enjoy the festivities. If you look right over here over my shoulder, you can see they got a little archery station where people are shooting bow and arrows and things like that. They've got stations from henna art to where you can get your swords made. They got live jousting, live animals. They even have some live music, and not to mention, they got plenty of carnival food, okay? We're talking funnel cakes, turkey legs, uh, you name it, I'm sure they have it. So come on out if you don't have anything going on this evening. It's open until 7 p.m. tonight, um, and the weather's gonna be just fine. It's springtime in Oklahoma, but when it's quiet, that's when you take advantage of those moments, okay? Because this weekend, we have the chance for some storms and some rain to kind of roll in midday tomorrow, as well as possibly in the evening. So if you guys do come out to the medieval fair or you do have evening plans, make sure you were staying in tune with the weather because that could be a factor tomorrow. The temperatures will remain in the 70s, but, but there could be a chance for some storms. And Marissa will have more coming up in Maine weather on the severe weather this, this evening. But for the most part, it's a great evening. Come out and enjoy um, for the most part and, and kind of just enjoy the, the festivities out here. In the meantime, I'm going to go see if I can't get a funnel cake. Guys, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Jake. And a grand opening and a new partnership right here on campus. Find out what replaced the OU bookstore under the stadium coming up. Plus a breakdown of the final weekend in college hoops. Stay with us. Welcome back. Emma Sears joins us in the News Center with what the president was up to today. Emma, what do you have for us? President Donald Trump is in California visiting the U.S.-Mexico border. President Trump attended a border security roundtable event earlier today to discuss the U.S. immigration system being full. Mexico has been absolutely terrific for the last four days. They're apprehending everybody. President Trump's visit comes a day after his abrupt announcement to back down from his threats to seal the lengthy border between Mexico and the United States. Former President, Vice President Joe Biden joked about having permission to touch people today during his first public appearance since several women allege that he has made them uncomfortable in previous encounters. I just want you to know I had permission to hug Lonnie. I mean, I mean, Biden spoke to reporters and told them that it was not his intent to make light of anyone's discomfort. Fisher Price and the Consumer Product Safety Commission has issued a product warning after multiple reports of infant deaths since using the Rock and Play sleeper. Thanks, Emma. The campus bookstore closed last semester, but it has finally been replaced. This morning, the OU Sooner Shops by Fanatics had its grand opening. The store carries just about everything Sooner Apparel. Clothes for newborns, youth, and adults can be found here. For the first time, for Fanatics, they are selling school supplies and simple things you could use at home, like hangers and laundry hampers. And for those students wondering, no, they do not sell Scantrons. And Mother's Day is just a month away, and one California animal shelter just might have the perfect gift. And why you might get a little chicken with your gift? 
Well, no, Unite continues. Welcome back to OU Nightly, an absolutely gorgeous day here in Norman today, and many are out at the Medieval Fair enjoying the 70s, but these are not going to last very long through the evening tonight. We'll get into the upper 50s for tonight, and that's pretty much the trend for most of the state, lows in the upper 50s, which is just a little bit warmer than usual, but tonight some storms are expected to start moving into Oklahoma at about midnight. Really, the thunderstorms are going to be in the northern portion of the state. Just a little bit of rain off in the panhandle, but the severe risk is here in this yellow. What we're expecting is there could be hail up to golf ball size, winds up to 60 miles an hour, but there is a very low tornado risk with storms that are going to pop up tonight between midnight and 8 a.m. And then tomorrow after 8 a.m., those storms are going to move off to the east and move the severe risk with it. So the severe risk is really just in the eastern portion of the state and we're expecting similar threats tomorrow but that wind will increase between 60 and 80 mile an hour wind threats for tomorrow throughout the day so let's take a look at exactly what we're expecting that rain moves through by 5 a.m here's where it'll be and then it'll move through scattered showers for norman throughout most of the day tomorrow and then it will move off for tomorrow evening. We do have a chance for some more rain to pop up in southern and southeastern Oklahoma here on Sunday afternoon as well. When everything is said and done, those rainfall totals could be upwards of an inch here in Norman, so there is a chance for some possible flash flooding here in Norman over the weekend. Again, Saturday, high of 70, warming up on Sunday. We do have those severe storm chances and those warmer temperatures making it a little bit of a dangerous weekend here in Norman, but those temperatures will be warming up even more. So enjoy those 80s on Tuesday and Wednesday because we'll be getting our next cold front for Thursday, dropping our temperatures into the 60s. Hey Aspen, why did the chicken cross the road? I don't know, Will, why did the chicken cross the road? Apparently to get adopted. The Bradshaw Animal Shelter in Sacramento, California is looking for people to adopt their chickens because they don't have enough housing. You can adopt your very own chicken for as low as $5. You know, well, I don't know how to care for a chicken, but I think I'll just wing it. And that's all the time we have to bore you with our puns and jokes, but don't go anywhere. Big Friday Sports is on deck with more. Meredith Moki and the Big Friday Squad will have everything you need to know about the gymnastics meets this weekend. Meredith? Today on Big Friday Sports, we'll give you the look into the men and women's gymnastics postseasons and an update on Sooner football. Don't go anywhere. Sports is next. Welcome back to Big Friday Sports. I'm Meredith Mulkey alongside Brooke Mursky. As always, we have all you need to know about your Sooner Sports. Let's get started. Now, the women's gymnastics team is undefeated heading into regionals. Last year didn't end how they hoped, but Big Friday's Shiloh Sellers tells us how the Sooners are looking to redeem themselves. Tonight, the women's gymnastics team begins their journey back to the national stage in hopes that it will end better than it did just one year ago. The 2018 NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championship left the Oklahoma Sooners heartbroken. With a little over three hundredths of a point, UCLA Hello, snapped the Sooners' two-year reign. Hi. With the fire well lit you know, under the squad, the ladies worked so their way down well. the schedule, picking up one win it's after amazing. the other, including their rematch <laughs> with the Bruins. Okay. They ended their regular season sitting pretty as number one in national standings and kept the momentum going into postseason. The defending champs did just that against Denver, Iowa State and West Virginia, posting a 195.9 to keep the title for the eighth season. The ladies land in Athens to compete in the NCAA regional. They will compete against eight different teams, but the ones to watch out for are number nine, Kentucky, and number eight, Georgia. With what we've seen so far this season, they should move on to the next round of competition with relative ease. You can catch the meet at 6 p.m. on ESPN3. Shiloh Sellers, Big Friday Sports. Now let's take a look at the men who are also in postseason competition. OU will host the MPSF Conference Championship Saturday for the first time since 2014. The number one Sooners will take on number two Stanford, California, and Air Force. The men are chasing their eighth consecutive MPSF title with one end goal in mind, winning their fifth straight national title to cap off their historic season. 
And spring in Norman means football season is almost back, and unfortunately, so is the injury list. Lincoln Riley announced senior linebacker Caleb Kelly and redshirt freshman defensive lineman Jordan Kelly will both be out for some time with lower body injuries. Caleb will undergo surgery, and his loss will definitely be felt by this team. He came up big for the Sooners last season with 61 tackles, which ranked fourth on the team. And now, after a hot start to this season, OU baseball has hit a wall as of late. Zach Brown is here to tell us about it. Including its first series loss last weekend against West Virginia. The Sooners play host to the 23rd ranked TCU Horned Frogs for a weekend set as they look to reverse their recent luck. The key so far to their season has been their pitching staff, which ranks 12th in the country in ERA and will call on sophomore Cade Cavalli to help put a halt to its skid. The offense has also been incredible, boasting a 273 batting average while scoring more than six runs per game. If they want a chance at taking down their conference foe, they are going to need both sides of the ball in full effect. Game one is set here at Eldell Mitchell Park with a six o'clock first pitch. Zach Brown, Big Friday Sports. Moving over to the ladies, the Sooners are ranked number two, but with the way this team is playing, Brooke, I think that could be changing very soon. You know, Meredith, I agree. The team is insane leading the nation in batting average, on base and slugging percentage, and home runs per game. The Sooners are looking to keep their 22-game winning streak alive as they host Baylor this weekend for some Big 12 conference play. The three-game series begins tonight at 630. And men's tennis is also hoping to keep their winning streak alive as they head down to Texas for the weekend. This will be the Sooners' first Big 12 road trip of the season. The Sooners have dominated in conference play so far with a 6-1 victory over Oklahoma State. Looking for the same results, OU will face off against Baylor today at 6 and Texas Tech Sunday at 1. Women's tennis is on the road as well as they head to Kansas to take on Wichita State. This should be an interesting meet as the Sooners swept Baylor last week 7 to zip. But the Shockers have won their last three matches and swept two of those. All the action will go down Saturday at noon. But that's not all for your Sooner Sports Weekend. Rowing will kick it off Saturday with the Crew Classic in California. Track and field will also go all day Saturday at the Reveille Invitational. And we told you about women's tennis earlier, but you can also catch them Sunday in Stillwater for a Bedlam matchup at 1 p.m. Now coming up on Big Friday Sports, NBA and college hoops are getting down to the wire as teams work to come out on top. And OKC Dodger fans were treated by a special player on a rehab assignment. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Big Friday Sports. We have softball and baseball at home this weekend. So if you're heading out to the ballpark on Saturday, 2 p.m. to 7 p.m., there could be a few scattered showers throughout the day, mostly just some harmless showers. We're not expecting anything severe throughout the afternoon here in Norman on Saturday. And then Sunday in those evening hours, we could see a little bit more showers pop up. So grab an umbrella if you're headed out to the ballpark this weekend. Brooke and Meredith, back to you. Thanks. Now, Dodgers fans were treated to a fun night last night. Clayton Kershaw was doing a rehab assignment for the AAA Oklahoma City after trouble with his shoulder. The left-handed pitcher played pretty well on the affiliate's opening day. He pitched for four and a third innings with six strikeouts. Kershaw said he enjoyed getting out on the field in OKC. It's good, uh, good first step and, um, you know, kind of got through everything he needed to. Got up for that fifth inning and... Uh, Got some guys on base, worked out of the stretch, did multiple different things. So uh, it was a good day. A lot of fans. Uh, you know, opening day, I'm sure, brings out uh, a lot of people anyway. But uh, last time I was here, there was a great crowd, and this one was no different, so it was great. Ultimately, the Dodgers fell by two, but overall, Kershaw had a pretty good night. Now, let's move on over to the Thunder. They host the Pistons tonight with four games remaining in the regular season. At the number seven spot in the West, OKC needs to finish strong if they want to avoid a first-round matchup with the Warriors. The team is coming off a nice two-day break after getting a much-needed win against the Lakers earlier this week. Russ and the boys will need to keep that same energy into tonight's game. Tip-off is at 7 p.m. Now the Milwaukee Bucks came up with a win last night, locking up the best record in the league and home court advantage through the playoffs. But the Sixers didn't make it easy. And the Giannis Embiid matchup began before the game when Giannis called out Embiid on Twitter, but the two dished it out on the court. The Greek, Greek, Greek freak put up MVP-like stats with 45 points, 13 rebounds and assists. Big man Joel got himself a triple-double, 34 points with 13 rebounds and assists. 
Hey, Meredith, let's go to college hoops. The final four is at our fingertips. I can almost feel it. Yeah, Brooke, this weekend it has come down to Virginia versus Auburn in the first semifinal, followed by Michigan State and Texas Tech. Michigan State is the only team left in the NCAA tournament to have won a national championship, and I'm going to go with them to win it all. If you can beat Duke, I think you can beat anyone. You know, Meredith, I'm going to go with a Big 12 pick and say Texas Tech will take it all. Well, let's not forget we get double the fun with the women's final for tonight. It looks like a green versus blue game. Oregon and Baylor start up the festivities off in Tampa, then UConn and Notre Dame tip off right after. Brooke, what do you predict for this game? You know, I want Baylor. They've been in it for 11 years in a row, and I think they can take it. See, now let's dive into the second edition of Top Play Friday, our favorite time of the week. Here are our picks for the most insane happenings in sports. All right, let's get started in the NBA. Number seven, Trey Lyles passes it to Malik Beasley, and he throws it down. A nasty dunk for them. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Crazy well, ride over. <laughs> Ooh, boom. Let's see. Let's go to number two. Let's go across the pond for this one. This is Parent St. Germain and FC not. They kick it, and PSG is Ooh, in. It's a goal. PSG goes curve. on to win 3-0. Man, that really didn't look like it was going in. <laughs> and here we go. Bring it around with the number one in good old MLB. See, Xander Bogarts hit a bomb to center field. Ramon missed it, but let's see how far he can get it. Throws a bomb all the way to third. Balls go in there. So, oh, he's out. An insane arm to get it all <laughs> the way across the field. Look at that throw. Center to third. Man. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much for walking, watching Big Friday Sports here at Gaylord College. We return just one week from now, same time, same place. Be sure you turn it, tune in to OU Nightly weekdays at 4.30 and again at 9.30. Have a great night.